So there are a lot of new changes with the MCAT over the last few weeks, including the MCAT becoming a shorter exam. In this video, I'm going to talk about that. What's up everyone, it's the Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. So the AAMC has uh, recently come out with some new guidelines in terms of the MCAT. And I've been getting lots of questions from students that are in the process of applying to medical school or who are about to take their MCAT or were planning to take their MCAT before all of this craziness uh, started and the MCAT was canceled. Now the AAMC has come out with new guidelines, kind of new rules about the MCAT that are supposed to be temporary and I'm going to talk about some of those things, give my thoughts and some tips for you guys. So there are a number of different things that have changed. Number one, the length of the exam. Number two, when you will receive your results. Number three, the new testing kind of dates that, that are open um, to take this exam. Number four, the testing fees, cancellation fees from all the tests, kind of cancellations. Number five, kind of some of the health and safety things that um, they're they're doing to protect everyone. And lastly, what medical schools think about students who apply without an MCAT. I'm going to address some of those things. So with all the school closures, you know, testing sites being closed, people are not allowed to leave their house to go to work or go to school. Well, it's hard to take an exam. It's hard to interview for medical school. It's hard to accomplish a lot of the requirements for applying to medical school when you know, we have all these restrictions. So one thing the AAMC has done, they have uh, recently shortened the MCAT exam from seven and a half hours to five hours and 45 minutes. So this shortened exam will be administered between May 29th and September 28th. And then they added a few more uh, test dates uh, for the people who have maybe scheduled an exam or their exam was canceled. Well, there are a few more kind of uh, exam dates that are out there that will be available for people to take the exam. This is June 28th, September 27th, and September 28th. And the registration for these exams will open here in a few days up on the uh, MCAT testing calendar. And a lot of people are asking this shortened exam, should I take this exam? The AAMC made sure to mention that the people that are taking this exam, they'll be tested on content from all four sections and they are responsible for knowing the same concepts and skills that are tested on the full length exam. So essentially what they did was they took this exam which you know you have your different sections of the exam. You have your chemical and physical foundations of biological sciences. You have your car section. You have your biological section, as well as your psychological, social, and biological foundations of behavior section. Previously, there were approximately 59 questions in each section, except the car section had 53. Now, the number of questions that are going to be on this exam it's 48 for each section. Previously, you had about 95 minutes for each of, the, of those sections. So that's, it came out to about 1.6 minutes for each section. For the car section, you had a little bit more time, 1.7 minutes per question. Now, the time for each question is approximately 1.5 minutes per each question. For cars is 1.7, so cars really didn't change much. Does this time change make any difference? Well, it doesn't appear to be just because they shortened each of these sections. And how did they do this? Essentially, they took um, some of the questions that, uh, the test questions. Any test that you take, a lot of the test administrators will include questions that may be thrown out or questions that they're testing. They're, they're trying to see whether this question will be used in future MCAT tests. Well, those questions they are not even using this year. So essentially the way the exam will be scored will be the same 
previously to the uh, longer exam. Another way that they shorten this exam is that they took away some of the breaks, including the lunch breaks. I think you get like 10 minutes for your lunch break, as well as they removed the end of the day survey, as well as the trial runs or the tutorials. So um, those things can add up 45 minutes to an hour or even longer. So instead of the full length exam, which has 215 questions, this exam will have about 192 questions. They also are some start times for the, uh, these new slots on those three dates that we talked about. There's a early morning start time of 6.30, afternoon start time of 12.15, as well as a evening time of 6 uh, p.m. And I know students are wondering what time should I take this exam? Well, it depends on what time that you can perform your best. Some students, including myself, are early morning risers, so I tend to perform early in the morning. I can't sit there and you know, know I have a big exam coming up and then waiting to 6 p.m. that day to take that exam. I think that will just you know, create a lot of anxiety for me and a lot of pressure knowing that uh, I'm just sitting at home reading through some notes and I gotta go take an exam at 6 p.m. at night. So uh, for me, I would probably stick to the afternoon, the 12.15, or the 6.30 a.m. start time. You also have to think about some technical glitches that may happen if you get into a car accident or if you have a flat on the way and then if you have a 6 p.m. start time, well, you may have to reschedule that exam. Versus if you signed up for the 6.30 or the 12.15, they may have some additional test slots or some openings at the later time slot that day. So that's another thing to uh, think about. A lot of students are asking, how can I prepare for this uh, shortened exam? Well, I, I think it's the same how you prepare for the longer exam. I think a lot of students have trouble pacing themselves through a really long exam. So what I would probably do and how I would approach this exam is I would actually take the full length, the uh, seven or eight hour practice exams to make sure that you can pace yourself for that long period of time. Well, when it comes to test day and your exam is only five hours and 45 minutes, well, this may actually help you because you are used to taking those longer exams. You get the, to the test date and it's only five hours and 45 minutes. It may not phase you as much. I am not aware of any practice tests that are, you know, that fit this description of this shorter exam. I would just continue doing practice questions with the uh, longer kind of testing formats out there. So can you receive a refund or get your money back if your test was uh, canceled? And the AAMC ha has come out to say that yes, you can get your money back. Um, you have to submit a emergency refund request in the MCAT registration system. And then you have to wait about two weeks to uh, get this refund. And they're actually not charging people to cancel their exams or to uh, change their exams from one date to another. And with everything going on with the uh, coronavirus and the current pandemic, the testing sites, the Pearson uh, testing sites are taking a lot of precautions. So you still have to socially distance yourself. This means that the, the people that are taking the exam are sitting about six feet apart in the testing center. So you know, they only have so many seats in the testing center, so that means less people can, you know, take these um, exams on one particular day. If you are taking your exam, you can wear a mask and some gloves, which I think is appropriate. Hand sanitizer uh, will be available, as well as any disinfectant uh, kind of things to disinfect the computer or your workstation. Uh, so th these are some of the things that they're doing to protect everyone. So what are my thoughts on this whole kind of shortened exam? And should students try to take this shortened exam and apply to medical school this year? You know, there, there are some medical schools out there that have said that they will, you know, consider students who don't have a MCAT score yet. And if you can explain, you know, that your testing date got canceled because of the coronavirus, uh, to the admissions committees, well, they say that they will look at your secondary applications, your letters of recommendation, you know, your personal statements, uh, and I imagine that they will look at these things even more closely. Well, should one take this shortened MCAT exam or signing up for it here next week? Well, my answer to that is if you are prepared to take the exam, 
you have you know studied for the last few weeks for the last few months and you were planning to take this exam around this time frame anyway I would say go for it it's a shorter exam you know the scores shouldn't change much from the longer exam but I feel like if you know if you're ready to take it um, I would say go for it the problem is that there are going to be a lot of people that are signing up to take this as exam you know on May 7th you know there are only three dates that they put out so far I imagine you know you're gonna have a lot of people soon as that you know that comes available on May 7th that people are going to be signing up for this so you have to make a decision whether you're going to proceed further or wait to until some more testing dates become available I do not suggest that students uh, take this exam just because it's shorter taking a shorter exam doesn't mean that uh, you're going to score higher on the MCAT it does not give you an advantage uh, just because the exam is shorter just because they took away the survey which doesn't affect your score the tutorial which doesn't affect your score the amount of breaks that you get which you know in essence doesn't affect your score but I can see the argument that um, you know some students they take two three hours of the MCAT exam and then take a break and then they reset themselves get something to eat use the bathroom you know refresh their minds and then they go back in for another two or three hours so if you have less breaks maybe this will impact some people's you know testing capabilities uh, because of that so uh, don't take the exam the shortened exam just because you think you will get a higher score or because you think the you know there's, there's less time in the exam but if you feel like you're ready to take it and you prepare it well and you're scoring well enough on your practice exams I would say go for it now should students apply to medical school uh, without a MCAT score there are some schools in California that say that they would consider students that uh, don't have MCAT scores that have been impacted by this whole thing that's going on well I think if other parts of your application are strong such as your GPA your letters of recommendation you have kind of real world experience you know uh, you just don't want to apply without an MCAT score if you have like a 3.2 or 3.1 or you know you your your application looks you know not really competitive I wouldn't apply I would actually take the MCAT maybe this puts you back another year but um, when you apply to medical school you want to put yourself in the best position to to matriculate and not having an MCAT score plus a lower GPA or plus some other parts of your application you know no research no clinical experience that are lacking um, I think that puts you at a disadvantage and there are only certain schools that are considering students without the MCAT score so not every school is doing this so those are my thoughts on this shortened MCAT exam in summary if you feel like you're prepared to take it and you have put in the preparation you've studied you are already going to sign up for the MCAT exam during this time I would say go for it if you have a really competitive application and you are applying to a medical school that is waiving students uh, MCAT scores I would say apply and see what happens um, there's a lot of uncertainty with everything that's going on now you know whether these testing exams will you know remain we will just have to wait until next week maybe we'll have more cancellations you know with the uh, with the virus and you know increase in numbers you know maybe these testing centers will close again we just don't know so May 7th I would suggest that you do that as early as possible as soon as they open up you want to make sure you sign up I imagine a lot of these um, you know testing dates will fill up really quickly you have to check you know the area that you're in I imagine places like New York or DC or Chicago you know their testing availability may be a little bit different from other states like Texas or Louisiana Oklahoma so uh, just keep that in mind but the AAMC is doing you know everything that they can do to accommodate uh, you know students during this time uh, make sure you continue to study hard work hard and um, you know you know if you're impacted by this you know I, I think this is something that we will all get through we will get through this you just have to keep working hard uh, 
remain positive and uh, keep pushing forward. What are your thoughts on this uh, shortened MCAT exam? Uh, put it in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. We'll see you next time.